Right now, I am standing where feedlots quietly turn ordinary cattle into finished beef in about 110 days. Most people just see fences and dust. Ranchers see rations, feed conversion, and serious money. Today, I am going inside a system that can push insane average daily gain on hundreds of head at once. Do not click away, because I am going to show you the real finishing ration, the schedule, and one thing big feedlots never like on camera, and it changes how you think about fattening cattle forever. Let me be straight with you. A commercial feedlot finishing 1,000 head in 110 days is not magic, it is ruthless precision. Every single calorie counts, every hour matters, and if you think you can just throw corn at cattle and watch them blow up, you are about to lose money, fast. Here's what actually happens. Cattle arrive weighing anywhere from 700 to 850 pounds. They're stressed, they're hungry, and their rumens are not ready for high energy feed. This is where most small operators fail. They rush the transition, and two weeks later, they're treating acidosis, bloat, or worse, burying animals. The first 14 days are called the receiving phase, and this is non-negotiable. You start with long stem hay, clean water, and a small amount of a receiving ration, usually around 1% of body weight. Think 12 to 14 pounds of a low energy mix per head per day. You are not fattening them yet. You are saving their lives and letting their gut adapt. Skip this and you will pay in death loss, guaranteed. But here is the part nobody talks about. During those first two weeks, you are also watching for respiratory disease. Feedlots call it the biggest silent killer. Cattle that just traveled hundreds of miles mixed with strange animals are prime targets. A sick animal does not gain, period. So injectable vitamins, electrolytes, and sometimes a metaphylactic antibiotic program, those are not optional in a commercial system pushing speed. Now, after two weeks, the game changes. You start the step-up phase. This lasts around 21 to 28 days you are slowly increasing grain and decreasing roughage. Week three might be 40% concentrate, 60% forage. Week four, 50-50. Week five, 60% grain, 40% hay. You're training the rumen to handle starch without killing the animal. And here's the kicker. You are monitoring manure every single day. Loose manure means you push too hard. Dry manure means you are leaving gain on the table. Perfect manure, thick but not hard, that is your signal you are dialing it in. Most people never look at manure. Big feedlots have entire teams doing it. And right here, let me tell you something that will save you thousands. Feed conversion ratio is everything. In a high-performance feedlot, they target 5.5 to 6.5 pounds of dry matter feed per pound of gain. If you are over seven, you are bleeding profit. If you are over eight, you need to stop and figure out what is broken because something is. If you are starting to see why this system is so different from pasture finishing, hit that subscribe button right now. We are just getting to the explosive part and you do not want to miss what happens in the next 60 days. Trust me, this is where the real money gets made or lost. All right, you are 40 days in, your cattle are now adapted, their rumens are powerhouses. This is the finishing phase, and it runs for the next 70 days straight. The ration is now 80 to 90% concentrate. We're talking cracked corn, steam flaked corn, dried distiller's grains, protein supplement, fat sources, and a tiny amount of roughage just to keep the rumen functioning. A typical finishing ration might look like this. 70% steam flaked corn, 15% dried distiller's grains with solubles, 8% protein supplement, 4% fat, and 3% chopped hay or silage. Add in your ionophores like menensin or lasalicid to improve feed efficiency and control coccidia, plus your vitamin and mineral pack. This is a bomb of energy. Each animal is eating between 24 and 28 pounds of dry matter per day. And here's what that produces. Average daily gain jumps to 3.2, 3.5, even 4 pounds per day if everything is dialed. That means in those 70 days of finishing, you are adding 220 to 280 pounds per head. 
Combine that with the step-up period, and you are easily hitting 500 to 650 pounds of total gain in 110 days. Do the math. A steer that came in at 750 pounds walks out at 1,350 to 1,400 pounds. That is a finished, market-ready animal. And when you were doing that across 1,000 head, you were talking serious volume and serious cash flow. But here's the dark side, the thing feedlots do not like you seeing, liver abscesses. When you push cattle this hard on grain, acidosis events happen, even small ones. Acid leaks into the bloodstream, bacteria follow, and abscesses form in the liver. At slaughter, those livers get condemned. It's a hidden cost. Some feedlots see abscess rates as high as 12 to 30%, depending on management. How do they fight it? Tylosin phosphate in the feed. It's an antibiotic that dramatically cuts liver abscesses. Does it work? Absolutely. Is it controversial? You bet. But in a system built on speed and efficiency, it's considered standard practice. You need to know that reality, whether you agree with it or not. Now let me talk about something just as critical, bunk management. You cannot just dump feed once a day and hope for the best. Feedlots check bunks multiple times daily. If there's feed left over, you're overfeeding and wasting money. If bunks are licked clean hours before the next feeding, you're underfeeding and losing gain. The goal is to have just a tiny bit of feed left, what they call slick bunks, right before the next delivery. This requires precision. Most big yards use computerized systems and feed trucks with scales. They know exactly how many pounds went to each pen, and they adjust daily based on consumption and weather. Heat stress cuts intake, cold weather increases it. A good feedlot manager is part scientist, part psychic. And then there is water. Cattle on high grain diets drink a lot. We are talking 10 to 15 gallons per head per day, sometimes more in summer. Dirty water, frozen water, or low flow waterers, any of those can crash intake and tank your gains overnight. You have to stay on top of it. Let me hit you with some brutal truths. Not every animal gains the same. In a pen of 100 head, you will have rock stars gaining 4.5 pounds a day, and you will have slackers barely pushing 2.5. Genetics, health, temperament, all of it plays in. Feedlots do not babysit individuals. They manage the average. If the pen average is 3.3 pounds per day, they're happy. That is the cold efficiency of scale. Also, implants. Growth-promoting implants like Revelar or Cinevex are standard in commercial feedlots. They boost gain by 10 to 20% and improve feed efficiency. Are they used in organic or natural programs? No, but in conventional feedlots chasing 110-day turnover, they are almost universal. You need to know what tools are actually being used if you want to understand the system. Here's another mistake small producers make. They try to replicate feedlot rations without feedlot infrastructure. You cannot just buy cracked corn and expect the same results. You need consistent quality feed. You need mixing precision. You need proper bunk space, at least 20 to 24 inches per head. You need health protocols and you need data. If you are not weighing cattle and tracking gain, you are guessing. Guessing costs money. One more cliffhanger before we finish. The last 10 days before shipping, feedlots sometimes pull back just slightly on energy or add a touch more roughage. Why? to firm up manure and reduce gut fill for weigh-in. A steer with a clean gut weighs more accurately and grades better. It is a small tweak, but it is another edge. And here's the truth most people do not want to hear. Feedlots are not evil and they are not perfect. They are businesses optimizing biology for profit. If you want to finish cattle faster on your own place, you do not have to copy everything, but you better respect the principles energy density, rumen adaptation, health management, data tracking, and relentless attention to detail. So here's my challenge to you. Take one piece of what you learned today and apply it on your operation. Maybe it's checking manure more carefully. Maybe it's stepping up your rations slower. Maybe it is finally weighing your cattle so you know what's actually working. Then come back and drop a comment telling me what you tried and what happened, because that's how we all get better.
If you are serious about raising better cattle faster and more profitably, subscribe to Biggest Bulls and Cow right now. We are building a community of ranchers who want the real information, not the sanitized version. Hit that bell so you do not miss the next one. And if you know another rancher, a neighbor, a family member who needs to see this, share this video. Knowledge is power, but only if we spread it. This is how cattle really get finished. This is how 1,000 head turn into profit in 110 days. Now you know. Let's keep learning, keep improving, and keep pushing our operations forward together.